Y'all ready for this? Then sit back, buckle up, and push play on the episode I call The Talking Dead. The Obama hate, R. Kelly sickness, and why your favorite pro-black personality may be helping you take L's. Welcome to the Black Renaissance, motherfucker. Welcome to the Smart Black People Podcast, the number one podcast worldwide for intelligent, ambitious, critical thinking black people who reject the coonery, buffoonery, and general dumb shit and black imagery presented in American media. Now, here's your host, uncensored and untamed as always, author, investor, rebel entrepreneur, and the bad boy genius himself, Harkan Ajala. What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your man Harkon Ajala, a.k.a. The Enlightened Bad Boy Genius, your uncensored, unfiltered, and untamed host of the Smart Black People Podcast, and I am always at your service. I want to talk to you today about something that has really been pissing me off, really been irritating me, and and more importantly than just irritating your brave host here, um, it is something that is a major problem for black people in America and all across the planet. So our entire black community is really struggling from this. Um, Every place I look, I see this creeping in, black Twitter, on Instagram. I see it on YouTube from a lot of the self-proclaimed pro-black or or conscious YouTubers. I see it on TV, I see it in print. Everywhere I look, I see this insidious problem in the black community. And it's a problem I like to call the talkers. As a matter of fact, I call them the talking dead. And just like the walking dead, they have no life of their own. So they want to suck life from other people. Now, let me just, let's go back. Let me tell you a quick story uh, to kind of give you a, a context of what I mean when I say the talkers. Uh, So my dad, who was a great man, a great father, uh, he's since passed away. But I remember when I was early on in college, maybe my first year in college, I was home for the summer. And my father was a professional painter, but he was a self-educated man. Um, He did not go to college, but a very, uh, very smart, very well-read, intelligent man and uh, a master painter, a professional painter. He had no business experience or training, but I remember one day he came home and he said, he just announced to my mother, he said, hey, Gwen, the uh, apartment complex where he was working as a painter on contract, um, he said, hey, Gwen, they are going to have the apartment complexes, the entire complex painted, and I'm going to get that contract. She's like, what do you mean you're going to get the contract? He's like, I can do it. I can get the people together to get the job done. And I know I can do it better and cheaper. I'm going to start a paint company and get the contract. Well, my mother was like, okay, Jerry, well, you know, go ahead and do your thing. Being supportive as she always was. Good black woman. Um, And my father set about doing what he said he was going to do. Now, It sounded crazy to a lot of people, but you know, this is one thing I learned from my father and I kept probably inherited this as well. Um, Anything that we can conceive in our minds, we believe we can do it. And once we've locked the fuck in on it, we don't look for reasons we can't do it. We just look for ways to make it happen. So my father, he decided what he was going to do in order to keep his prices low is he he was going to hire people who he was going to hire some professional painters and then he was going to hire people from inside the apartment complex to help out. Just, you know, basically teach them how to do the basics of painting, cleanup, preparation, etc. to help out. Not only would that keep the prices low, but he felt like it would give him an advantage in earning and winning the contract because he would be able to, you know, say to the board, hey, look, Not only am I going to give you the best deal, I'm going to give you the best performance at the best price, but I'm actually going to be giving back to this community by hiring people from within the apartment complex. Brilliant idea. And as a matter of fact, it actually worked. Now, let me let me 
tell you what this all has to do with our topic for today. When my father was going about campaigning or bidding for the contract, uh, he was getting together the different people that he was going to use. And so he was talking to different people in the community, trying to drum up support for his paint company to win the contract by talking to different people and saying, hey, look, I'm going to be hiring people from inside the community. And there were people who, of course, said, man, what the fuck are you talking about? Them white people ain't going to do this, that, and the other. They ain't going to let you do this. You know, you've already been contracting out here. There's no way etc right so he wins the bid surprises fucking damn near everybody except me and my mother and sister right so he wins the bid and now there are people who he went to and said hey i want you to help me with this i want you to be a part of this i want you to work with me if and when I get this contract and they were like, nah, man, nah, I'm good. I got other shit to do, right? These are some guys who were professional painters that lived inside the complex. Other black men. Now, after my father wins the contract, four or five of these motherfuckers are going around throwing shade on his company, on the work they're doing, going around talking about, man, Jerry got these people don't know what the fuck they're doing. He doesn't know what he's doing. You know what shade is like? Talking shit. Derogating. Here's a black man has done something amazing. They're going around tearing it down. And so I was out there working as a foreman because my father had taught me to paint uh, many years before. So I was pretty good. I knew all the different things. And so he did what you do, right? He hired somebody he could trust as his foreman, his son. And he was hard as hell on me. Uh, He expected the most from me, which was cool. Good lesson, right? So I'm one of the foremen out there working. And I know people out there in the complex as well. Some of them are my age. So I'm hearing all this bullshit. I'm hearing all this shit talking. People are coming to me like, yo, you know, Bootsy said da-da-da-da-da. And, uh, you know, Larry said da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And it's just... You know, fucking pissing me off. You know, you're talking about my father. You're trying to fuck up my father's, you know, uh, venture. This is something that, you know, was a great thing. It was a great thing, not just for him and my family, but a great thing for other black people in that community, which was a lower income community, to see a black man pull something off like this. It was a great thing. So the shit pissed me off, you know, and I was talking... One day I was telling my father about him like that, you know, this motherfucker's out here talking shit, saying this and that. Cause I actually, here, here's what had happened. I saw him, he was driving up towards the, the site where I was working. Right. And one of the motherfuckers that was talking shit, Larry or duck, some motherfucker named duck, I think. Right. Duck. <laughs> one of the motherfuckers talking shit. I see him and he's, he's like waving at my, Pops, like, yo, what's up, Jerry? Yeah, man, what's happening? Blah, 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 right? I'm like, the little punk motherfucker. So my father, when he comes up and, we, and he's talking to me about, you know, what we're doing for the day and everything, I'm like, hey, daddy, you know that motherfucker right there is one of the dudes going around talking shit about uh, your operation and saying that we ain't going to be able to do what we say we do and we don't know what we're doing and you don't deserve this contract and all of that, right? So I'm just letting you know. He said, oh, shit, son, I know. He's like, oh, shit, son, I know. I'm like, you know? He's like, yeah. He says, I said, why are you, you you know, still dapping him up and all? He said, look, son, let me tell you something. And he told me something that I never forgot to this day. And it's something I want to pass on to you because if you want to succeed in life as a black person, you've got to know this. He said, let me tell you something, son. He said, especially for black people, there's two kinds of people. There's two groups of people in this world. He said, you got the smaller group or the larger group, the larger group of talkers. And then you got a small group of doers. He's like, and what you're going to find in life is that 
the people that you see talking all the time are almost always in the largest group, the fucking talkers. He's like, that's what talkers do. They talk. Most specifically, the talkers will be talking about the doers. He's like, that's generally how you're going to know somebody uh, belongs in the group of talkers. Because they'll be talking about other people who are doing shit. They'll be criticizing it. They might be uh, complimenting it. Usually they're criticizing it, finding fault with it, saying, why did they do it this way? They should have done it that way. Da, 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 da. But it's almost always about people who are doing. He's like, now, what you're going to find about the smaller group of people, the doers, is that they rarely talk. Because they're too fucking busy doing. And when they do talk, they are usually talking about what they're going to do next. He's like, what you almost never see them doing is talking about the talkers. And the reason why, son, is because they know that talkers don't really matter. The fucking talkers of the world are not the people that get shit done. They're not the people that move shit along. They're not the people that make an impact in the world. What they are, are the fans in the stands who sit around and criticize the players about shit that they could never do themselves. And so now you understand why I want to talk about this fucking affliction of the black community that I see every day. A bunch of fucking talkers always sitting around talking about and criticizing, finding fault with any black person who's doing something. Now, that brings us to this subject, and I'm sure you've heard about this. And this is this is one of the things that really kind of brought this to a head because I'm tired of hearing this shit. Uh, I remember back in 2008, my wife and I had just moved into uh, a new home in the uh, community we live in now. The beautiful community. We're excited about it. Now, that, that's not the home we live in now. We've moved two more times since then. But it was our first time in a really great community that we could start a family in. Now, the reason I remember it is because Barack Obama had just amazingly been elected president of the United States. We actually moved in in November, like just not a week maybe or two after he was elected. And the funny thing about it is during the... remember who was like ah he ain't never gonna get elected these white people ain't gonna never let a black man be president and so on and so forth and so far all right anyway so he gets elected he gets elected and a wave of euphoria went through black america and black people around the world truth be told a wave of euphoria went through It was an electric wave. And I don't give a fuck what segment of black society you were in. From fucking black people in the 1%, owners of companies, entrepreneurs, even fucking black Republicans. All the way down to the brothers on the block. All the way down to dudes in the hood. Many of whom went to vote for the first time in their lives. Like, fuck it, man, I'm about to go down here and vote for this brother. Fuck it, he ain't going to get elected, but I'm going to go on and put my vote in anyway. There was a, a wave of euphoria. It was a great thing. And I was extremely happy. And I'll tell you why in a second. But fast forward to almost exactly 10 years later. Barack Obama won one, not one, but two terms as president of the United States. Fantastic family, beautiful family, beautiful wife, 
Wife is, you know, fucking brilliant, gorgeous, you know, killer, killer body. It's good for the brothers, right? Everything that represented black excellence well, very well. Like I said, fast forward 10 years later, and now all I hear is a bunch of motherfucking black people talking about Obama ain't shit, wasn't shit, didn't do shit for black people. Obama was, I've seen people write ridiculous shit like voting for Obama was the biggest mistake of our lives and all this ridiculous, ludicrous shit. All of a sudden, all these black people have decided that Barack Obama wasn't shit and didn't do shit for black people. Now, however you feel about Barack Obama, whether you voted for him or not, whether you feel like he did shit for black people or not, let me let me explain to you something, okay? Let me tell you why, as I said I would a, little, a few minutes ago, let me tell you why I was so thrilled that Barack Obama was elected president of the United States. It wasn't because I thought he was going to fucking turn the goddamn 400 plus years of oppression and white supremacist disadvantage against African Americans around in four years. Okay. I didn't think the next day we was going to wake up and there's going to be money raining from the sky and the streets are paved with gold and them handing out the greatest jobs of all times. And everybody gets a, uh, you know, uh, fucking Rolls Royce and all that shit, you know, and, and that may sound funny. That may sound funny, but look, some black people, you, I listen to them talk and that's the type of shit that they apparently expected. They just expected some magical shit was going to happen because one fucking black man, joined the United States government at the head of it, at one of its uh, arms, right? One of its branches, the executive branch. Yes, he was at the head, but this idea that one black man was going to just become elect, uh, become president of the United States and suddenly everything was just going to fucking be milk and honey for black people was ludicrous. But the reason that I was thrilled is because I knew that it wouldn't necessarily turn around some black people whose, quite frankly, whose inferiority complex is so deeply rooted that they'll never believe that it's in their power to decide their fates. But what I did know is that my children, my children would be able to look and say, you know what? A black person can do anything in this country that a white person can do. Because a black man is president, a black woman is first lady, there's black kids in the White House. I have a son. I didn't have, hadn't had my second son yet, but I had my young Jimon. I had had my young son. I had two daughters. I knew what it would mean psychologically for them, and for a whole lot of other black kids, and for a whole lot of other black people. Quite frankly, I remember watching the tears of joy and elation from black generations older than me, from my wife's grandmother, from my wife's parents, both my parents and, and, and all my grandparents were dead when it happened. But still, I could feel them in the next, you know, in the grave beyond. I could hear their joy and applause as well. I mean, that was moving to see what that meant, to see people who had come before me, black people who had come before me and sacrificed far more and endured far more hardship, disadvantage, disenfranchisement, and racism 
than I ever have or will to see the amazing effect that it had on them was worth that shit. I didn't fucking think the United States of America was going to turn around and become a heaven for black people just because Barack Obama was elected. Now, again, I'm here to tell you there are some things that Barack Obama did or didn't do that I disagree with. There are some definitely some things that he did that I disagree with or I wasn't satisfied with or I was disappointed with. But again, let me tell you, this whole fucking Obama blowback, this Obama backlash, this Obama ain't shit, he didn't do shit, miss me with that bullshit. And I'm going to tell you the main reason why. Most of the people who are talking that shit, they're just in the second group. They're the talkers. They're the talkers. They talk shit about every black person. Well, you know what I mean when I say every black person. Not every fucking black person that achieves something. But I'm telling you, if you pay attention, damn near every black person who achieves something, particularly if it's more than them, they talk shit about. And you can see it tonight. You can turn on your YouTube, turn on your Instagram, go to black Twitter. You're going to see them. Many of them purport themselves to be pro-black, purport themselves to be people who are trying to advance black people's plight, who are trying to help uplift black people, who are trying to make... uh, make the conditions for black people in America and around the world better, who are advocates for black people, who say they're conscience, who say that they love black people. And yet when you listen to the motherfuckers, all they do is talk shit and tear down every fucking black person that has achieved something. They either tear them down, not only they tear them down, They rip apart everything they do. They second guess everything they do. Nothing they do is good enough. And on top of all that, they attribute their fucking success to the machinations of white supremacy or the Illuminati. Oh, they let Obama be president. They they made Obama president for this reason or that reason. Really? Really? the fuck out of here see before he was elected you said oh they'll never the white supremacy will never let a black man be elected then after he got elected you said oh yeah well white supremacy elected him on purpose because they wanted to trick black people and all that bullshit listen let me tell you something the talkers always do the same thing they talk shit about the doers it's in every group of people and it is certainly This way in the black community. It's not just Barack Obama. See, that's the thing. I didn't come here just to, you know, defend Barack Obama or tell you it's just Obama. It's not just Barack Obama. Think about it. Look at it. Watch. Listen for yourself and you'll see it. And there's a really warped, strange twist to the whole thing that is particularly deleterious particularly negative particularly counterproductive to the black community let me tell you what it is not only do they tear down and always criticize and uh, derogate and question and impugn the motives of and name call All the black people who achieve something. Like I said, not just Obama. Think about it. Watch, listen. Almost every black person who has achieved something extraordinary. From President Obama becoming president. Jay-Z rising from the projects to now near billionaire status. and, And more importantly than the money to a black man who has become an owner owner of multiple businesses that are providing jobs to other black people 
from the Marcy Projects to that, to Diddy, to Beyonce, to uh, Will Smith, to uh, Kevin Hart, Steve Harvey, Oprah Winfrey, um, you name them. I got motherfuckers talking about Colin Kaepernick already. That nigga took the money. Now, I'm not saying, and you can go on down the line. I just named off a few. Jada Pinkett Smith, Gail King. I just named a few. Any black person that does anything extraordinary, they tear down. They tell you that they're a tool of white supremacy. They tell you that they are a member of the boule. They tell you that they are agents. They tell you that they don't care about the black community. They act as though they know them. They talk about them as though they know them. Like they know from personally. Oh, yeah, that motherfucker don't want this. They're just trying to do that. They talk about it as if it's fact. Not just their assumption or even their deduction based on what they've seen and heard. Not based on what I've seen and heard. I have reason to believe that this person da 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 da. No, no, no. They talk about it as if it's fact. Like they know. Like they've sat and talked with the people. Russell Simmons. Issa from Insecure. I can go on and on and on. Charlemagne the God, another one. Read his book, Black, Black Privilege. Sorry, I mean to fuck that up, Charlemagne. Read his book, Black Privilege. Amazing story. An incredible journey from criminal in South Carolina, I believe, to where he is today. And, and Charlemagne the God, real talk. You can say whatever you want to say, whether you like him or not. The dude is a, has a brilliant mind, is an incredible communicator, and a thinker. I digress, though. Not only do they tear them down at every possible chance, not only do the fucking talkers tear down any black person that achieves something extraordinary, but... This is the little fucking weird, strange, warped, macabre twist that's so counterproductive. They are remarkably empathetic and even champion sometimes black people who do fucked up shit. Black people who actually damage our community. I call it the R. Kelly sickness. These motherfuckers show up trying to tell you that you shouldn't want R. Kelly to be held accountable for fucking being a pedophile. They blame the women that he sexually abused, allegedly. They blame the black women. Oh, you telling on a black man. You bringing a black man down. You're helping white supremacy bring another black man down. Some of them like to say, oh, we should let the community handle it. What the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? To all you people saying that bullshit, that's this week's FIYTB. Fuck is you talking about? We haven't even progressed to the point where we sell our own hair weave and wave caps to ourselves. Now we're going to police the criminals in our own community? Fuck out of here. We got to be real. Let the community handle it? Dude, fuck is you talking about? Talking about, talking about. Talking about. If that was going to happen, the community should have handled that shit way back in fucking 2000 when the first tape was circulating through the community. Where were you motherfuckers? Where were you pious let the community handle it motherfuckers? Why didn't y'all go handle it? Yeah, the talkers are remarkably forgiving and empathetic towards black people who do foul shit often to our own community they go into all this what about shit well what about harvey weinstein and and kevin spacey how come the media is not talking about them motherfucker do you think harvey weinstein is a household name like r kelly really do you think uh fucking kevin spacey was a household name like r kelly let, let me just tell you something that shit revolves around money 
That shit revolves around what's going to get the most attention. If you're more famous, you will get more smoke from the media. Real talk. Did they talk about Martha Stewart when she went to fucking jail for insider trading? Fuck yeah, they did. Fuck yeah, they did. Now, if Justin Bieber was to fucking <laughs> uh, have a tape circulating around where he's having sex with a 13, 14 year old girl, you bet your fucking ass the media would be talking about it. And yeah, there'd be a documentary made and everything else. Don't try to turn one thing into another. All this energy, all of this fucking talk, all of this fucking smoke that you expend in service of black people who commit crimes against people in the black community. And yet all you have for black people who achieve is scorn, derision, and criticism. Look, I'm not saying anybody's perfect and I'm not saying any black person is above reproach. They are not. No one is not me, not you, not Barack Obama, not R. Kelly, no one, okay? Nobody is above reproach. That's the whole fucking point. There is nothing wrong with being critical of a black person who's reached some success. There's nothing wrong with questioning their actions, especially when they have, if you think they're negative towards the black community. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there is. But when it seems that all you do is that, all you do is criticize and question and impugn their motives and t call them coons and bootlickers and boule and all that other shit. That's all you do to seemingly every black person that achieves something extraordinary. And, 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 and I don't hear any credit given. That sounds like, well, you know what that is. Let's be real about it. Let's be real about it. Because my father told me this many years ago about the talkers. Let's be real about it. He says, son, what it usually comes down to is good old fashioned jealousy and envy. Good old fashioned hating. That's the real hating. Good old fashioned jealousy and envy that they have achieved something that you haven't achieved. Or you wanted to achieve and weren't able to, or you're like, well, why them and not me? They got more attention than you. They got more money than you. They got more whatever. Much of the time, that's what it is. Now, I'm the first person to say, just criticizing someone or their actions or their artistry or what they've done doesn't make you a hater. What makes you a fucking hater is when you criticize unnecessarily unfairly or exclusively when i never hear any fucking uh accolades i never hear any credit coming out of your mouth to anybody who has achieved something that most black people have not been able to that most people often have not been able to reminds me of one of my favorite jay-z songs and one of my favorite Jay-Z lines, already home from the Blueprint 3, when Jay-Z says, and as for the critics, want to tell me how I should do it? They never did it. See, this is the thing about the talkers. And I want you to pay attention to this. I want you to pay attention to this when you go to YouTube and you're listening to the latest diatribe from your favorite pro-black, <laughs> your favorite pro-black, YouTuber, so-called pro-black speaker, leader, etc. I want you to pay attention because it may very well be that what they're really doing is helping you to keep losing. I want you to pay attention and watch and see if you see what I'm talking about. If they're always attacking and never giving any props. And, and it's a funny thing because... The thing that I notice most is here's what seems to fit the bill. When there's a when there's a black person 
that has a lot of money, a lot of fame, and often education or accolades from white people. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you why this is so important, especially that last one with people who are black people who are getting a lot of accolades and acclaim from white people. I'm going to tell you why that's important because of something, uh, a concept called reaction formation. I tell you, a lot of you guys know that I majored in psychology uh, in college and I'm a lifelong st uh, student of human nature, why people do what they do. There's a there's something called a defense mechanism called reaction formation that psychology students or psychologists will know about. What reaction formation is, is when there's something that you really desire, you really truly secretly desire it and you don't have it. And so you act as though you don't desire it or when there's something about yourself that you hate and you essentially project it onto somebody else. Now that's a little different because it's projection, but let me, but in other words, here's why I bring up reaction formation. A lot of times the person you're listening to when they're criticizing and, and ripping the shreds, that black person that's achieved something extraordinary. A lot of times what's going on is they're engaging in reaction formation, especially when that black person gets accolades from white people. Because you see a lot of black people, whether they know it or not, and certainly most of them won't admit this. I talked about this at the very beginning. A lot of black people still have some very deep rooted inferiority complexes and they secretly crave validation from white people. And so when they see other black people getting accolades or being celebrated by white people secretly. It's what they really want. I see, I see black people doing this all the time on YouTube secretly. It's what they really want. And you know, I don't like to get into name calling and all that shit and I don't do it just to be doing it, but I'm gonna go ahead and be real with you. You know, I hear Dr. Boyce Watkins all the time. And by the way, Dr. Boyce Watkins is a smart dude. Some things that he talks about, um, I think are really positive, especially a lot of the stuff that he talks about in terms of black business and entrepreneurship. But I hear Dr. Boyce Watkins talking about white people this and white people that all the time. And he's always uh, throwing shade on black people and in inferring that they're house niggas. You know, black people who are again, getting accolades from white people or embraced by white people or white television stations, white pundits, etc. And yet he's always talking about his, how he's got his degree. He's always talking about, well, you know, I have a PhD in finance, da, 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 da. That's from a white college, dude. But it's cool when you are big up in yourself by saying, well, I have the P, you know, I'm a PhD in finance, et cetera, et cetera. But then every other black person that white people show accolades or give accolades to is a house nigga. Ah, oh, well, you know, they just doing that for white people. They're just trying to please white people. Da, 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 da. Sounds like reaction formation, bro. And look, nobody's perfect. I'm not saying Dr. Boyce Watkins is a piece of shit, but what I'm saying is, hey, we got to call a spade a spade and we got to be self-aware, all of us. None of us are above reproach. You know, I see Tariq Nasheed. You know, he's got the coon train videos and always talking about black people looking for butter biscuits from white people and so on and so forth. And yet when Michael Moore came calling and wanted to put you in his documentary you was willing to play a pimp which is not that far i mean look you uh, Tariq never really acknowledges at least i've never really seen him acknowledge it but you know if y'all haven't seen this go back and look go back and look dude is you know writing these fucking pimp books and all this bullshit when michael moore came along you jumped up and was willing to play a pimp in his documentary for what that sounds like wanting some butter biscuits, bruh, for butter biscuits. Michael Moore is white too. And I love Michael Moore, but I'm just saying, based on your own rhetoric, 
you're doing and you have done what you are lambasting other black people for doing. And again, this is not about trying to just drag Boyce Watkins or Tariq Nasheed. But again, no one is above reproach. And if people are going to set themselves up as leaders and, and proclaim themselves as black leaders, then they have to be open to scrutiny and they should welcome that scrutiny. Real talk. And yet again, and, and I'm, I'm repeating this because it's important. It's really important as smart black people that we open our eyes to this and open our eyes to how destructive this is to us as a community. Every black person that commits a crime, every black person that gets caught doing some illegal or unethical shit, these motherfuckers seem to come out of the woodworks always with the same angle, which is, well, I mean, what about these white people that did it? And y'all, y'all shouldn't be, y'all shouldn't be turning on this black man. Almost always a black man, though. This leads us into a whole nother podcast. We'll, I'll talk about in the next episode. Almost always black men, though. Black women, I notice, don't get that same love. Black women don't get that same latitude. I very rarely see these brothers coming to the defense of a black woman. But again, I don't want to digress into that. That's for the next episode. Here they come. Well, I mean... Maybe R. Kelly did or R. Kelly ain't shit, man. He might have did it, but what about this? What about that? What about this? Listen, fuck what about? Here's what we actually really do have to do as a community of black people. When you talk about the community taking care of it, what the community needs to do, what we have to do is to have and enforce standards, high standards. And that means if you fuck up, and you fuck up, then that's on you. We're not going to sit here and try to act like it's not as bad as when a white person does it. We're not going to sit here and say, yeah, but what about these white people? All of them, all of them deserve the consequences to their actions. But we also know, let's be real, that just like there has been throughout the entire history of America, we also know that there is a likelihood that a powerful white man is going to have a better shake, going to get a better shake than a black man. And that's fucked up. We need to fight that. We need to loudly decry that. We need to call that out but not by trying to rationalize or justify in any way a black person who's doing shit that has a negative effect on our community. Listen, R. Kelly, R. Kelly, he's sexually abusing black women, black girls. You want me to fucking come to this motherfucker's rescue? You're looking for some reason to defend him? You want to overlook him and say, well, what about Harvey Weinstein? Nah, I go back to what Brother Malcolm X said. It's something my father taught me and it's something I live by. When you're wrong, you're wrong. And when you write, you write. Period. End of story. That's a direct quote from Malcolm X. That's how we have to roll. Our standards have to be set by us. And they have to be policed by us. That means if you do some fucked up shit, especially against the black community, there is no love and there ain't no rationalizing and there ain't no justifying. Period. End of story. But it also means that, you know what? We celebrate. We celebrate the achievements of black people even though they may not be perfect, even though they may have flaws, even though they may not be as conscious as we want them to be, people grow. People can be on the spectrum, okay? People today aren't necessarily where they're going to be. And I've, I, look, I, especially in, jo in jest and jokes, 
I mean, I'm hard on some black people, too, especially when I feel when I see them publicly doing things that are negative to our, towards our community. When you're out there, when you're out there fucking uh, pr promoting the idea that black women ain't nothing but hoes and tricks and bitches. When you're out there promoting to black youth crime as a preferable way of life. When you're on some bullshit like that. Yeah, I got a problem with it and I'm going to call it out. That again is what we have to do as a community. And when you've been wronged, when you've been wronged, even if I'm not really feeling you, I don't like what you're doing or what have you. I'm going to stand up for you then, too. But let me be clear. Let me be crystal clear about this. I'll tell you what I'm not going to do. What I'm not going to do is to tear down publicly ripped to shreds and f look to find faults in every black person that achieves something just because they're not screaming out every minute. I'm exclusively working for black people. I'm only concerned about the black community. I'm only working on the black agenda. I'm not going to fucking do that. And then try to convince black people that I'm helping them by doing it because that, that is the most universal characteristic of the talkers black people and I want you to look for this ask yourself this question the next time you hear somebody talking shit about another black person who's achieved something that's the most universal characteristic of the talkers and my father told it to me and told me about it way back then he said Harkin the number one thing about the talkers is that they'll talk about the doers, but they won't do shit. Now, again, the next time you're listening to somebody that's ranting and raving about Obama or Will Smith or Jay-Z or Beyonce or Oprah Winfrey or Kamala Harris, Kamala, however you say it, Cory Booker, doesn't matter doesn't mean I have to support or believe everything the people believe or whatever, but any black person who's achieved something that is extraordinary, that's outside of the ordinary achievement. I want you to watch and I want you to look and I want you to say to yourself, ask yourself this question. What have they done? done not talked about done not preached about done not dreamed about done not made speeches about what have they done what are they doing because see this is the thing most of these fucking talkers out here talking about man obama ain't did shit obama didn't do shit obama ain't shit he didn't do nothing for black people those motherfuckers ain't never held a public office they've never ran for public office they never been a community organizer they never been a person who had to get people who were volunteers to move in one direction to sacrifice. They can't organize a fucking birthday party. Most of them can't even tell you the three branches of government. And if they can, they don't know shit about the inner workings of politics, how it actually works, how government works. Most of the talkers, they have never done any of the shit that they're criticizing and questioning and second guessing black people who have achieved have done all they do is talk. So think about that. The next time you're listening to somebody talking that bullshit, throwing shade. And you know what? If you see that, if you see those characteristics run the other way, run the other way. Cause it is not helpful to you. It is not empowering to you. It's disempowering to you. So as always, look, I appreciate you being here. In the next episode, we'll talk about what I hinted at earlier. But as always, I want to tell you, if you benefited from this, if you got something from this, if there's something that you took from this that can help you in your life, I ask you, 
please become a subscriber and share this podcast with other black people. And most importantly, please support us on our mission. Go over to www.smartblackpeople.com forward slash rise up and become a patron member and support us. It's a little as three bucks. There's not a single person that doesn't have three bucks. You get some amazing gifts for doing so. But most importantly, it supports our mission to bring empowering, enlightening, uplifting, and intelligent information to black people everywhere on the planet. I thank you, as always, for being here. So I I always have to say this because by and large, I mean, black people, our community is overrun, overrun with a bunch of rhetoric and people in their feelings. So always remember the smart black people credo, extract the emotion, inject the intelligence. Until next time, Stay rich, stay black, stay sexy, stay enlightened, stay happy, stay smart. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Smart Black People Podcast with your untamed host, Harpan Ajala. Please get exclusive VIP content, secret high-end wealth-building videos, bonus Q&As and how-to videos, and support our mission to provide empowering, intelligent, anti-cool media content for black people on the rise by going now to www.smartblackpeople.com forward slash rise up. Thank you again. And remember, nobody's going to save us but us.